Hello, welcome to Steve Knows. This is such a juicy one. Version 28 release notes have been sent to somebody who posted them on Reddit. They got sent in an email when they contacted support. Apparently, they didn't think they're supposed to do that. So shout out to Pigsfly465 for this one. Um, so this is the blog post that's posted on Reddit. Someone took the email and wrote it up so people can easily copy and paste it and just see it in a clearer format. And we are seeing some rather incredible features that are going to be coming in the version 28 update for the Oculus Quest. 120 hertz support, Oculus Air Link, very interesting, um, some infinite office features and some fixes for all of those terrible issues that we've been seeing in the version 27 update. So let's go have a look at this thread. So the first detail is the Guardian issue should be resolved in this software release, including the following. Quest 2 headset does not remember the previous Guardian. So when you put it on and you want to just jump into a game, you have to reset the Guardian every time. It doesn't remember the mapping, which is a, such a pain. The Guardian jumping around, moving, also a pain. I haven't experienced that one, but I know people did comment on the video saying that they had. And also an error message tracking has been lost. A classic where it just doesn't know what's going on. So hopefully it's going to be fixed and you're going to have a much, much better experience. One of the infinite office features is going to bring your desk into VR. So I did show a video of this not too long ago about putting a portal over my desk so I could actually see what was on my desk. I was able to use my keyboard to type on the in the browser using the mouse and keyboard. And that was like infinite office-esque. But Bosworth did also post on Twitter a video that looks like the desk is going to be more of an actual desk. So here's the video from Bosworth. You can see that his desk, it's not a portal, it's an actual desk. He then leaves, grabs his K830 Logitech keyboard and pops it on the desk. And then it does this beautiful mapping where it's actually there. So rather than using the pass-through portal like I was in the other video, it's actually going to solidify and put a proper desk in there, not a portal and a mapping of your keyboard. They're only going to be mapping the Logitech K830 initially. So if you don't have one of these, oh, well, I'll leave a link in the description and you want to check them out. They're around like £100 and they have a trackpad and the keyboard all in one. So that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty excited for that one. I'm looking forward to using my Oculus Quest for productivity and it's actually happening. Next one, which, ooh, this one creates a little bit of drama that I'm going to touch on as well because... Right, let's get... I'll let, one sec, I'll tell you in a sec. So, so the Oculus Air Link. The Oculus Air Link allows you to discover and pair your Oculus Quest headset to your Oculus Ready PC over a secure Wi-Fi network. This is going to be an experimental feature and you're going to meet some requirements as well. So let's check out the requirements on that on the support site. So the best practices, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, ACX protocol, nothing crazy there, not using a mesh network. And the router to be the router to be in the same room as the headset or line at sight, at least by one meter off the ground. So if you saw my best wireless Oculus Quest setup, uh, where you have a dedicated router for wireless gaming, the Oculus Quest, and it's in like forty pound for the router, then you're going to be meeting these requirements. It's perfect. Um, and then also some known issues that if you're going to be finally using this feature when version twenty eight rolls out, that you should perhaps be aware of. But they did dive into it further after that post and put it as a blog post for everyone to see. And they start off talking about Air Link. So Air Link will ship in experimental mode on the Quest 2. We're excited to hear about the community's feedback. Air Link gives people more options for accessing PC VR games on Quest 2. Oculus Link cables will still provide a robust, consistent experience, while those with a strong Wi-Fi setup can stream wirelessly through Air Link. So how interesting is this? So we're currently using virtual desktop to play PC VR games. So we connect the headset to that and then we use the virtual desktop streamer on the computer and the application in the headset to stream Steam VR titles, which works absolutely fantastically. And they just accepted it onto the store. We thought happy days, they're doing something nice, but Oculus are doing what they always seem to be doing and eliminating the competition. I'm not sure how good this is going to be. Is it going to be good as what Guy Godin has implemented? I don't know. This Air Link is probably going to be better for using the Oculus store, the Rift store directly, as opposed to using the Steam VR store. So you may, you may want to use both still. We're going to have to test out the performance, but they are releasing an official wireless solution to the Oculus Link. So don't buy the cable. If you're about to buy the cable, don't buy the cable yet, because this should be a free feature. Also, infinite office updates. We just spoke about bringing the desk into VR and pair your physical keyboard with your Oculus Quest 
2, which is what I was just talking about, the K830, the Logitech K830, this, this keyboard, um, they should hopefully be bringing more physical representations of that keyboard um, at a later date, but at the moment it's the Logitech K830, which is what I've got. Exciting. It's the reason why I got it. I can finally use it for its intended purpose. And of course, the 120 hertz support for the Oculus Quest 2. So we started off at 72 hertz with the Quest. We then got a 90 hertz update. And it's now soon to be coming 120 hertz update. They did say that there's not going to be any games that are like supporting it as soon as it's released. But it is going to be an experimental feature that you can use on the Oculus TV, the Oculus browser, and just general like scanning of the home. But nothing, but none of the apps are going to be implementing this. Um, on day dot. Although some apparently are, are going to be pushing to do it. So he said now we're giving gamers and developers even more choice to push smooth gameplay to the next level with the option to enable 120 hertz display on the Quest 2. Developers can soon begin to ship apps on the store at 120 hertz natively, but the users will have to opt in 120 hertz via the experimental panel. And there's a few problems with this. Battery is one, the battery doesn't last very long as it is, and overheating is one. And me personally, for standalone games on the Oculus Quest, I'd rather than put all of that effort, hit 90, hit 90 FPS or 90 hertz refresh rate, and put that effort that you would have put in trying to squeeze as much as you can out optimi optimizing it to reach 120 hertz, and make a more complex game, improve the physics, make more content. I prefer us getting bigger and better games than having that slightly smoother experience because 90, at least I know some people are not going to agree, but I think it's good enough for a standalone device. I am, however, extremely excited to see 120 hertz come on PC. So a 299 device reaching near the benchmarks of what the Valve Index is, is pretty impressive. So for PC VR gaming, I'm happy to see 120 hertz. I'm really excited for that because I can squeeze more power out. I'm going to get really stunning, beautiful games, but I'm also going to get more frames. Not at the cost of having a game with less content or, or, or downgraded visuals. So, very excited. Now I want to talk about something Guy Godin had mentioned to upload VR. He had a statement about what was actually occurring with the, the, the wireless link, the air link and what that means for virtual desktop and how he kind of feels about it. So he said in 2017, Facebook copied the base functionality of virtual desktop on Rift and incorporated it into their platform, essentially, essentially making an app obsolete. So I'm not surprised to see them do this again on Quest. They copied the fitness tracking app year last year and released Oculus Move. Yes, they did, very upsetting, essentially killing the company. They also released App Lab as they saw how popular SideQuest was. That's what they do. And we've seen this with Facebook in their entire history. This isn't just something that's niche to the Oculus brand. This is Facebook. This is just what they do. So if you have a popular app on Quest today, expect Facebook to copy you and leave you in the dust. As for the fate of virtual desktop on Quest, we will have to see how Facebook's solution competes. Judging by the numbers of issues plaguing Oculus Link today, I'm confident Virtual Desktop will remain a valuable solution for a while. It's also got a lot of cool features in the works that I can't wait to share with the community. See, what a great, mature response. And I, I have to agree, Virtual Desktop probably has ironed out a lot of the creases. Air Link probably isn't going to be as, as stable. It's just being released. It's probably going to have lots of bugs. But it's beneficial to those that can't afford Virtual Desktop. And he has cool features coming. I know a long time back he said that he was going to try and emulate screens as well, which is something really interesting that the de facto Air Link wouldn't be able to do. And that's something I would really like in my productivity applications. He is also probably more likely to hit the 120 hertz refresh rate before the Air Link. He had 90 previously before they were able to do it on the Oculus uh, Link via the wire. So that's something that he might bring as well. So we cannot forget, in honor of Guy Godin, the virtual desktop developer, the amazing work that he has done for the community. And I'm hope, I hope he's made a ton of money as well. Lots and lots of copies of the app have sold. What else we've got coming as well is a light theme. Because at the moment, the style is all dark. Dark is very trendy. I like having the dark feature um, in my like IDE when I'm developing as well. It's just nicer on the eyes. Keep things bit more relaxed, but they're going to add an option where you can make this light. So it's going to be brighter, brighter in your face. And that will be done in the display theme, a dark or light theme. Hopefully they add more themes so I can have a pop of color because it's very like gray, isn't it? 
Um, so some color would be very nice. And of course, some improvements to the hand tracking. So that's it for me today, guys. They have been the updates for the Oculus Quest 2 version 28 update crazy stuff lots of those issues we've complained about are going to be fixed we're going to get some infinite office features so i can have this desk in front of me in vr and use this k 830 keyboard really exciting a wireless pc vr solution 120 hertz support which i'm more excited to have that on pc which is coming at a later date also a light theme and some hand tracking improvements so that's it for me today guys please subscribe to the channel hopefully i'll see you next time weekly updates occur at the end of the week and i do random videos throughout and i do have a haptics vest giveaway coming soon so as i said subscribe to the channel hopefully I'll see you next time happy gaming guys good day